Hello, I'm Emma B. Perez, life design and career coach for teens and young adults. This Empower Your Teen YouTube channel is all about supporting parents. To learn how your high school or college age child can go from undecided to excited, click the link in the description box. To get even more support as a parent, just stick around by subscribing and clicking the notification bell. Okay, let's get to today's topic. Welcome back to Empower Your Teen. I'm Emma B. Perez. So today we're talking about money, honey. I love this topic, especially for young people. You know, so many young people get to 18, graduation, college, whatever it is, with little to no financial education, which is just so crazy to me because one of the first things we ask them to do, college, is a major financial decision and they haven't even read loans or anything. So a gap year is a great opportunity to start to provide them some financial education. And I'm, this is why I'm so excited to have Holly Reed Tootle here with us today. So let me introduce you. This is Holly. She's an award-winning author, speaker, and certified financial education instructor dedicated to helping adults and the next generation manage their finances as responsible stewards. She is the founder of The Master Playbook, a financial education and wellness company which has educated thousands of people through speaking engagements, online courses, coaching sessions, and her book, Teach Your Child to Fish, Five Money Habits Every Child Should Master. As a personal finance advocate, Holly is on a mission to motivate, inspire, and help others break the cycle of paycheck to paycheck living and create a legacy worth leaving. Holly, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Emma. Yes. So before we get into the nitty gritty, would you mind sharing with us your story? How is it that you came to be a financial education um, uh, instructor? Yeah, absolutely. So it actually started with me working directly with teens. So early in my professional career, I started volunteering with this accounting association where they were looking to really expose high school juniors and seniors to careers in accounting and finance. And so I thought that was such a great idea to kind of feed the pipeline, but I actually signed up to teach a lesson on financial literacy. Like, you know, now you have your first paycheck, now what do you do? So now these aren't just your, any high schoolers. These are scholars in their class, cream of the crop, Again, juniors and seniors getting ready to prepare for college being their next step. Um, and so they're in this phase of life, like you mentioned, where they're getting ready to make really two of the biggest financial decisions of their lives. These decisions are initially going to determine their financial starting point, and that's where they plan to go to school and what career they think they want to pursue. So these um, kids were really struggling to tell me some basic financial information. And just to give you an example, like they could barely articulate to me the difference between a credit card and a debit card. And I was just in awe. And so that experience coupled with my own personal financial breakthrough or aha moments really um, gave me the insight that th there was a gap, right? So we're relying on our school systems. Kids really weren't being taught about money management at home. And so here I come. Now I want to try to fill that gap between home and what they may be learning in school because money management is a life tool. It's something that they're going to use for the rest of their lives. And so a fire kind of was lit under me. And I decided to write a book and the book was to target, it's targeting parents, the teacher child of fish, targeting parents about what we should be teaching our kids about money management before they leave the nest. And, um, you know, the book was so well received when it was launched that it just propelled me to become, you know, a certified financial educator and to just continue this work where I do, you know, online courses and workshops and things to really help solidify and give parents and teenagers real life examples so that they can start applying it in their everyday lives. That's so amazing. I'm so glad that you're doing that work because there, you know, parents want to 
uh, educate their children about finances, but they really just don't know how to go about doing that. Like, how do you make it age appropriate and things like that? So what a great resource to have your book. So I'm so glad that you did that. Okay, so let's talk about this. Um, And I actually want to start with, um, before we get into, okay, what do we do? How do we go about doing this? I want to actually start with some of the mistakes that people make during, um, you know, with their kids during this age range, maybe during a gap year, so that we know what those are and we know how we can avoid them. Yeah, absolutely. So there are really two main mistakes that I see during this time. So one, the very first one is that there are no financial expectations established or set during this gap year. So this is a year that's supposed to be about personal growth, development, maybe exploration. And I get it. Parents are worn down. They have taught, they, they are trying to teach their kids everything um, that they think they need. But again, because money management is so essential, we've got to make this, um, you know, an expectation. So even if your teens are hungry for independence, they, they still need our guidance during this time. And for me personally, I know I definitely needed my parents while I, while they didn't think I was listening to them, (laughs) I was actually really listening to them and really trying to, um, looking for their guidance in a lot of things, which my dad gratefully gave me a little bit, but not everything that I needed. So the first mistake is you have to set some expectations around finances, around money. So will your child work during this gap year? If they are, if they are going to work, my advice is to set the expectation about what you expect them to do with that money. How do you expect them to manage that money? Is it okay for them to just blow it all? Or do you want to make them save some of the money that they're earning for their first semester when they decide to enroll? Or do you want them to save that money for the car they're probably asking you for? Um, If during this gap year, you know, I say make them pay rent. You don't have to make them pay, you know, real world rent, but if they're staying with you, if they're still living in the household, why not make them pay a a small portion of rent or take on some responsibility like paying for their personal cell phone bill or whatever the case may be. Now, if if your child isn't going to work during this time because they're going to be doing other things, like what are your expectations around, you know, the money that you give to them or the money that you provide to them? Is there a limit? How are you going to hold them accountable so that they are managing the money wisely and you, you know, being really um, thoughtful about the way that they're spending your money? So just setting the expectation is a big one. Um, The second mistake that I see is, again, not allowing your young adult the space to make a mistake, right? So as moms, I know we are, we can be so protective. (laughs) We want to, we want to shield our kids, shield our mini me's so that they don't fall into some of the traps that we, um, that we may have made financially. But here's the, here's the other side of that, like in failure or in poor decision-making, there is a lesson in that failure or in that bad decision. It's a teaching moment. So we have to set the expectation, but we also have to give them that room, that capacity to make their own personal mistakes. I love that. You know, um, one of the things that, that I teach is that when we make mistakes, there's an electrochemical reaction in our brains that doesn't happen when we don't make mistakes. And so what this does is it actually grows your brain. So when you're not making mistakes, your brain's not growing, actually. So, um, and I know that it can sound scary to to think about someone making mistakes with their money, (laughs) you know, oh no, you know. Um, But a gap year is really kind of a great, buffer time. It's a safe place to make some mistakes on a smaller scale. Than Absolutely. It would be on I was, I was going to say the same thing. Like this gap year, they still have you as a safety net. We're not talking about, you know, $20,000, $30,000 mistakes. We don't want them making those mistakes now, 
but if they make you know a hundred dollar mistake now or just learning what it feels like to wait or to be patient or that delayed gratification on not being able to purchase something immediately um, all of those lessons are like you said going to give them that growth that maturity that they need so when they out when they are out on their own they can make more mature um well thought out financial decisions yeah exactly exactly okay so they're getting older they're wanting yeah. some more independence so how do you have these conversations with them yeah now with this i actually have three strategies um on how you can approach this as a parent um, because again, a lot of, I know a lot of us feel like they aren't listening. I'm just talking to, <laughs> to, uh, the wall, but they are listening. Trust me. They are listening. I can, I, I know this just from my own personal experience, um, for my parents repeating things over and over again. And sometimes that's what it takes repetition. So my three strategies on how you can approach this are one, you've got to make it a part of everyday conversation and activities. You know, they need to see you living it out. So one, make it a part of everyday conversation. You have to tie it to something that they care about. And three, you have to give them some financial tools and resources that they can reference. So it's not, so the message isn't just coming from you. And I'll, I'll dive into these a little bit more. So with the first one, the whole making it a part of everyday activities, errands, conversations, they need to see you living it out. You know, they need to know. Um, now, I know talking about money can be intimidating to some people, um, especially if you struggled with it yourself or you feel like this is something you're still learning yourself. Uh, but the truth is they, your kids are learning from you anyway. Most of our children or most of the ways that we learn about money are from observation you know, watching other people, mimicking other people's behaviors and through repetition. So they're going to pick up, they pick up on, you know, how you spend your money or pay your bills. They are very observant. And so um, if you haven't been the best with money in the past, this is a, this is still a great opportunity for you to be vulnerable with your teens, like share your money mistakes. What did you learn from it? Or if, if you are really good with money, tell them what, tell them the things that you do that work really well for you. Um, you, you might even want to share if say there's a big event coming uh, up and you're, this is something that you're committed to or organization or a cause that you're really committed to. You want to share why you give your money to this research or to this organization like all of these different things are ways that you can start having money conversations that aren't a lecture or that aren't um you know maybe always shaming them or telling them something that they did wrong but ways to have positive conversations about money where you're just sharing information and applying it to how it personally impacts you um, so I think the second thing I said was you have to tie it to something that they care about, right? So what this looks like is think about any of the milestones at their age. So graduation, um, maybe getting their first car or their first consistent job. All of these are milestones where they are either receiving money <laughs> or it costs money or both, right? So help them set a budget or establish some goals around the things that they care about. And, you know, if they don't care about it, then you don't care about it. If they don't care about, you know, saving their money, then don't you care about it? So you have to, again, attach it to things that they care about, things that they are, you know that they are going to come to you for, um, for help, for advice, just because they've never done it before. And so we want them to really, at this point, put some skin in the game and um, take some ownership and accountability around the things that they care about, but from a financial perspective. And then the third thing um, I think I mentioned was, oh, you have to give them tools, some tools, some resources that they can reference. So again, the message isn't just coming from you. 
you know, we know that we can sound like a, a tape recorder on, you know, rewind and where it can lose a lot of the meaning or the emphasis. So it's important to introduce them to either videos or books or seminars or online courses, something that's going to be a different voice, maybe even a different perspective, some, where someone is saying the same thing you're saying, but they're saying it differently because they have a different story or they have a different background. Um, but you gotta be, you gotta be able to give them the message in different ways so that it'll all be received and something's going to sink in. <laughs> That's great. I love that. And you know, something that I've done before, and I, I would love your opinion on it, is sharing something that I, maybe I agree with some of it, but not all of it. And okay. having them watching it and saying, now let's discuss it. You know, this Absolutely. is what I thought. What do you think? Do Absolutely. You know? Yes. I think that's awesome. Um, one of the things that I talk, teach in my um, workshops is just about, you know, spending wisely, but also spending consciously, like attaching your, aligning your spending with your beliefs, your value system, um, and how important that is. And so then we go through a series of articles or news clips or stories about, you know, big companies or, or big executives who may have made a moral mistake or a moral decision or, you know, a decision that may not sit well with, with all of their customers. And then just having that conversation about, well, what do you think? Well, would you want your money? Would you still want to support that company or that mm -hmm. business based off of what you know about them today? Mm -hmm. And so just having those conversations so that they can tie in how their money really impacts the world and impacts the community because it does. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Okay, so um, for families out there who are planning a gap year uh, with their child, what are some, you were talking about expectations, have some expectations this year for them to learn about money. Do you have any recommendations for what those expectations could be or certain ways that they can, you know, go about learning more about finances in this year? Yeah, absolutely. So um, one, that's where the resource guide is going to come into play, which is going to, which should be really helpful. But again, with those expectations, if you expect your um, team to work during this time, the perfect time now is to talk to them about these expectations are now. And I'll give you an example. So there was a, a summer during my college experience where I went and lived and worked in Chicago. And so I spent the whole summer in Chicago, came back home to Atlanta, that's where I'm from. And um, my mom said, so how much money did you save? Like, how much are you going to be able to contribute to your books? And I was like, huh? <laughs> save money? <laughs> so that was an expectation that was communicated to me too late in the process. Yeah. I blew that money. I spent that money however I wanted to enjoy Chicago. And so it's really important that if they are working, if they are earning money, that you have a conversation in advance of how you expect them to manage that money. Do you expect them to save a certain portion? Mm -hmm. um, what do you expect them to save it for? Or at least give them the assignment and say, how will you spend your money? Like, give, give them that push um, to think a little ahead of the times before the end of the summer. What do you want to accomplish? How much do you want to save? And um, so that's one of the big ones that I've seen. I get a lot of complaints from parents of teenagers where they're like, oh, my son, you know, works during the summer, but he just blows it on gaming or he blows it on tennis shoes or whatever the case may be. And I'm like, well, what expectation did you set? <laughs> so there has to be, you have to have those conversations. Um, and this is really important, Emma, because it's one thing to just tell our kids one thing, right? It's, it's one thing to give our kids great advice. I got a lot of great advice. Um, well, I won't say that. I got a lot of what my parents did. They told me a lot of what not to do with my money. You know, don't spend it all in one place. You don't want to 
spend your money on that. What, where I saw that they didn't do, they didn't tell me what to do with my money. They didn't show me step by step you know, how to save. They told me to save, but nobody ever showed me how to save or gave me a strategy or a methodology. So it's really important during this gap year that they practice these things. Practice them now, practicing them now while they, again, have that safety net, while they, you know, have someone who can pick them up if they make a bad decision is going to be critical um, because the more they practice, the better they'll be when they are out on their own. Um, so I can even give another example. Like my first, when I, when I graduated from high school, I got thousands of dollars in gifts from family and friends who wanted to really celebrate that moment with me. And um, I didn't have a bank account at age 18. And so my mom took me to open my first um, savings account at 18. I felt so grown up. I was like, oh, I'm going to have a bank account. And she literally we opened up a savings account she spent maybe five minutes t talking me through how to record my withdrawals that's a key word she taught me how to record the withdrawals and keep up with the money but she never taught me how you know how i how much i need to save and you know so i was awful at saving because i had i absolutely had no practice doing it and so this gap year is all about practicing those money habits, allowing them to make decisions, giving them the guidance, showing them the way, giving them specific steps. Um, and so that's what the resources is all about. That's what my book does. It gives you specific steps and tactics and strategies that you can implement so that your child can practice it and so that they can master it. So when they, again, are out on their own, it's not, um, it's not such a struggle and they can really avoid a lot of the financial pitfalls that we may have faced coming, you know, during this time in our lives. Yes. And what an amazing gift to give them at this age to give them specific strategies that they can follow um, that can help them just in the long run not have to repair too much. Right. You know, or not have to repair as much as if they didn't have these strategies, right? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Holly, for being here with us today. No, thank you. I really appreciate this. All right, let's talk again soon. Okay.